Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about MTG Finance. Um, this will not be like my official monthly MTG Finance video, but it will be a very interesting video as I will talk about the fetch lands. The Zendikar fetch lands pretty much will dominate this week of topic. But here's my solution to the fetch lands. So I've looked at the various decks, um, a two color deck, you don't really benefit that much from having uncolored. So if you're Splinter Twin, you're blue red and you're only blue red, then any deck that fetches red or blue should do a decent job. If you're heavy blue, a, a fetch line that fetches blue is gonna do a decent job. And you might say, yes, there are cases where you don't want to necessarily um, you want to get a mountain or a island and not take an extra two damage because you need to activate it that turn and you need to have that flexibility. But in my opinion, that's extremely, uh, that's like only a very minutiae difference in those decks, right? Yes, it's not ex absolutely, absolutely optimized, but if you went to Friday Night Magic or a smaller event, it shouldn't really matter that much. So. I would just go ahead and say the play here is not to buy the enemy fetch lines. Do not buy them. Um, do not buy them when they're this high. Do not buy them when they get even higher. The play here is there are other fetch lands right now available that you can buy fat packs or boxes and easily trade for them as well. They're in trade binders everywhere. What about those fetch lines? And those fetch lines have a tremendous amount of growth. Uh, you know that they are unlikely to be reprinted anytime soon. You know that um, they have ex eternal value in modern and legacy and all of that stuff. And at, at the end of the day, unless a deck is really a Jund, so Jund is the one deck I see that really benefits quite great greatly from Verdant Catacombs. But the other decks I see out there, you know, the difference between an Arid Mesa and a you know, the black red one, not all that much for that type of aggro deck. So I would say that if you wanted to be, if you wanted to do the correct financial decision, I would urge you to look into the Onslaught Fetch Lands. If you don't have your 20 made up of those, you need to get that done. And yes, you can say, oh, the price would be a little lower, etc., etc. Oh, rotation is going to lower the price. Yeah, that might be true, but not... I would much rather be in a place where I had the lands than didn't have the lands. I paid a little more for them because once you start looking for them, like the Zendikar enemy lands right now, it becomes a very big problem. So I would say stay far away from the enemy fetch lands. The price is not, um, it's not a good price. And to be quite honest with you, it's a terrible price right now. It's a terrible time to buy them. Uh, and especially if you're a player and you're not, you have no intention of making money from them. Yeah, you can buy them and sell them higher, but what? If you're a player, maybe you just want them to play with. So I would say the solution is to make decks or to use the Onslaught fetch lands, uh, the, I guess, Karns of Tarkir's fetch lands, and that should solve most of the problem. And I really do feel like that is a valid solution to this problem of the Zen. And the Zen car enemy fetch lands not being reprinted. Some people will say, oh, it's not a problem. But if it's not a problem, then why, is, why are they like 80 to 60 to $80 now? I mean, overnight. They've increased, some of them increased double, some of them increased 50%, and uh, one of them could probably hit over $100 soon. Ooh, like, you know, and I, I just feel, I have a overall gut feeling that most decks, and again, I'm not a pro Magic player, don't necessarily care about what type of fetch lines you have. Minus Jund. Jund is the only one I can consider I can think about on the top of my head, maybe Abzan, you know, any free color heavily dependent on hitting your turn, like uh, Anna Fezzer or your Rhino, maybe they care more about it, but at the same time, you have Shock Band to help you out. You have various other ways to get your color on time. So anyway, I would say heavily stay away from the enemy fest lands right now, maybe when they cool off buy them at that point, but stay away from them right now. And in the ally fetch lands, if you don't have your 20 right now, make your 20. If you have your 20, start trading for them, start 
of getting some of them because they're going to be excellent, excellent trade bait the next mod time modern season comes in because not everyone can afford a $80 or a hundred, I'm assuming a hundred dollar scalding tarn at that point, but they can afford a flood to strand at $25, right? And if flood to strand hits $25, you've done very well for yourself um, in that time span. So that's what be my MTG uh, advice for the week. And I'll have uh, more comprehensive videos, if you will, later on about MTG Finance. I decided that it is something that I do want to talk about, but not in not like more of a general MTG Finance talk. And then like the Patreon people will get the next video a little earlier, not that much earlier. Bye guys.